Hi, uh, Dutchman here. It's a review of the uh, Walther PPQ M2. Just got done ringing one out, and I want to go over this with you. Uh, first of all, we'll go with the talking points, as we always do with the reliability, parts, track record, ease of maintenance, detail stripping, method of operation, capacity, weight. So, First of all, we'll, we'll start off, I'm not going to go into history on the weapon, that type of thing. You can look that up for yourself, find that out. Um, reliability. I have a lot of rounds through the Walther, uh, both the PPQ, the P99, starting with the P99. Uh, the, the PPQ is very similar in operation to the P99. There are differences. Uh, the new M2 has this new uh, button release on the PPQ M2. Otherwise, it's the identical firearm to the uh, M1, as they call it now, which is the paddle release for the magazine release. It's personal preference either way. I prefer the button release. A lot of people like the paddle release. It, you know, whatever floats your boat along those lines, whatever you want to train with and whatever you're used to. I would suggest if you stick with a paddle release, you stay with guns that have a paddle release. Uh, trying to learn different weapons under stressful situations, as I said before, is just a recipe for disaster. So practice, you know, find a weapon that you like and practice with it. Uh, stay with that. that. Stay with that particular weapon. Practice, practice, practice until it becomes second nature. And it, it's going to, you're going to, it's going to benefit you quite a bit, um, but uh, I won't preach any more about that. Um, reliability, as I said before, is excellent reliability. I've, between the P99, the PPQ M1, and this PPQ M2, at least 20,000 rounds I've had or, uh, or more with uh, these weapons, and I really haven't had any problems. I put about all. Oh, 2,500 rounds on a, the PPQ M2, and no issues whatsoever. So reliability in my book is, is top notch. Um, Walther, the machine work, um, method, uh, the uh, the way it's assembled, uh, the materials used, uh, top notch all the way. They're 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 a good company, and and this is no exception. It's it's an excellent pistol, well designed. So, no problem there. Uh, parts availability, I'm going to discuss that in, later on in the video when I actually take this apart. So, I'll tell you about that. Uh, I, I will say I, there was an issue there, but I have resolved it. So, I, I'm real happy with that. And you'll know more about that in the video. Um, the track record, I think it has an excellent track record. It's not, shall we say, if we want to use the Glock as a, as a standard, shall we say. It doesn't have the track record of the Glock. By that I mean it's not hasn't been around as long as the Glock, um, and it's not ha, has not been accepted by the amount of police departments, military units, things such as that. I don't know of too many police departments that use the PPQ, but um, I, I don't think they would have uh, any issues with this weapon. I'd I'd certainly take it into battle or into harm's way and uh, trust it implicitly. I have no problems with this weapon whatsoever. So, and I think as the time goes on, the track record is just going to get better and better with this, with the PPQ. Uh, ease of maintenance, I talk more about that in, in the video, as you will see, and I don't see an issue with that. Same, same with the detail stripping. Um, method of operation, it's a, a striker fired. It's a, you want to call it like a, basically a single action. Uh, the trigger pull, I, I've got about 5.1 pounds with this. And it's very crisp. It resets very, very quickly. It probably has the best trigger that I've seen on a striker fired weapon, bar none. It is an excellent trigger, very well designed, you know, from a gunsmith standpoint of view. No shortcuts there. Uh, it's a fantastic trigger. If you practice with this gun, you're, you're going to be pretty... It, it's going to be a, a really good tool in your hand if you do some practicing with this particular weapon. 
Um, 15 round mag capacity. You can't get a 17 round extent the mag the 17 round mags for it. So magazine capacity is good. And uh, the weight, the weight's excellent. Also, uh, give you an idea. I compare this to a Glock 19 because they both have four inch barrels and similar sizes. Uh, the PPQ is uh, 30.6 ounces, fully loaded, 15 rounds, 115 grain, am, uh, 9 mm. And uh, the Glock 19 Gen 4, I come up with uh, 30.1 ounces. So you're only talking about uh, you know, half an ounce difference, so which is basically negligible. Um, we're not going to, as I say, I don't usually get in ergonomics because what's what's good for me may, may be terrible for somebody else vice versa but uh the gun does feel really well i mean it feels feels really good in the hand uh, they did an excellent job on the grip one thing i like about it more than the glock is the finger grooves here are, are very slight whereas the glock is a lot more pronounced so I will be honest, and I try to be honest in all these videos, I, this does feel better in my hand than the Glock. Uh, it comes with a total of three back straps that you can interchange. So uh, it's going to fit probably about everybody. It has the, the Picatinny rail so you can put your lights and your attachments on there. You know, all your stuff you want to put on, hot lather dispenser, coffee makers, whatever you can put on there. I see people hang a lot of weird stuff on, including bayonets, but it is useful for the light. Um, the sights are, are excellent. Um, it does have polymer sights, and of course, so does a Glock. Uh, the, the amount of accessories are not uh, as good as, let's say, as a Glock, so far as aftermarket accessories, uh, holsters, different types of sights, that, that things such as that. But... Uh, for the most part, uh, I feel you don't need a lot. Uh, holsters are available. DeSantis makes a good holster. Um, Galco, while they don't have a holster, shoulder holster for this particular model, I've used the Glock, um, a G22 that, that fits in a G22 and with a little bit of pushing and shoving and working with the leather, it, it does fit. Uh, it actually fits pretty nicely once you get it uh, kind of like uh, broken into the holster. So there's there's stuff out there for this gun. Uh, I, I feel it is an excellent gun. Uh, in the in the later on in the video I go into the, the detail stripping and uh, cleaning and some more info on that. So we'll get to that and then uh, when uh, we're done with that I'll give you my closing points and. Uh, We'll just go from there. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about uh, field stripping. And I'm going to detail strip the slide for you and the ease of maintenance, um, parts availability. I go over some of the parts that I uh, that I ordered and tell you about those. But first, let's clear the weapon and then proceed with uh, field stripping. I'm going to remove the magazine. Make sure the weapon is empty. Point it in a safe direction. Squeeze the trigger. Then there's these two of uh, this little takedown bar here. So I'm going to retract the slide oh, an eighth inch or so. Pull that down then push the slide forward. We're going to just set the frame aside. We have this left. It's the slide, so we're going to remove the recoil spring and the barrel. Now this is basically all you would do for um, field stripping. You wouldn't go any farther than that to field strip the weapon. And for most times that's going to be sufficient for cleaning. Wanna, uh, Get in here, clean your rails, breech face, extractor hook, 
and just general cleaning in this area in here. This is where you're going to get most of your carbon and fouling. But this weapon, fortunately, is very easy to detail strip, and I would recommend doing that, oh, I'd say every thousand rounds or so. It's not that big a deal. There's a little projection right here at the rear of the slide. What we're going to do is we're going to push in on that and then the end plate will come off and then we can just pull the striker assembly right out. This is the striker assembly. This is not necessary to uh, take apart to clean. Uh, you're not going to get too much crap back in there, but it, it is very easy to clean. The spring will be pushed down. There's two little cups here that come off and then everything just comes right out. So that's pretty simple to clean. So we'll put that aside. Now the extractor is a, a big thing that you're going to have to clean that uh, you get a lot, of, a lot of gunk behind that. So there's a little pin right here and it's spring loaded. A plunger is probably a better word for it. So I'm going to push that plunger in and when we push it in the extractor already started to come out. Okay now the extractor holds the firing pin safety plunger in. So while we push on this this plunger assembly we're going to move the extractor out of the way take our pin punch out cover everything with your your fingers this will just lift right out the firing pin plunger that's the safety and put your put your finger over this hole because this plunger could fly out and you'll need a part before you uh, really want it to get one and then just move the extractor out and it'll come right out and then there's your plunger now that'll come out also Sometimes you can just knock on the, see it started to come out right there. So you can take this out. Sometimes it's a little stiff when it's new. That'll come out like that. And that's basically it. There's the, the slide detailed stripped. So now you can get in here and clean this extractor channel, which is definitely going to get cruddy. So you want to clean that real good, Q-tips, small brush, blow it out with some compressed air. Uh, this is the extractor spring, and by the way, that just, I didn't take that out, but that just pulls right out. And then the firing pin channel, or the striker channel, you want to clean that, that whole channel there, Q-tips, some solvent, compressed there, blow that out. Make sure it's nice and clean and there's no fouling in it or brass because a lot of times you get flakes of brass, uh, flakes from the uh, case when it uh, ignites, you know, when the primer ignites, why sometimes it'll shear a little bit of brass flakes off on there and that'll get stuck in this channel and therefore you won't have clear movement of the striker assembly going forward. It'll impede that and you may, you may get light strikes on that. So that's basically now it's that's it. Clean it real good. Clean the extractor real good, the hook. Clean everything real good, dry it. But you can see all I used to take this apart was this punch and that's it. Now while we have everything apart I'm going to uh, tell you what I found out with spare parts on this particular firearm um, and compare the parts that I purchased to the parts of a Glock because they were basically the same, even a lot of times the same uh, nomenclature for the, the parts. At first I thought I was going to have difficulty in obtaining the parts, which would have basically I would have given this firearm an unfavorable rating then because what good is a gun that you can't get parts for? 
if you, as I said before, and you've heard it from my other videos, if you have to send things away all the time, why, that's not the best. If you can't fix it yourself, why, you could be in for some difficulty, especially if uh, factories get slow up. Uh, you, a week wait may turn into a two or three month wait, and in the meantime, your firearm's down, you can't use it. And a firearm that you can't use is totally useless. So parts are a very, very big thing to me. And as you saw, uh, it's not very difficult to take this slide apart. It's very well engineered. I'm very impressed with how they engineered the slide. Very easy to take apart. You don't need a, you know, a, a hammer and drive pins out and have little uh, tools to pull this or pull that, that type of thing. It's very easy to take apart. So the parts that I ordered for this, I, I ordered a sample of parts here, and um, I ordered a striker assembly, and this was from Walther you know, America, or Walther USA, whatever, the one in uh, Arkansas. And um, you have to get the whole striker assembly. Uh, I wanted to just get a few parts for it, but they said, no, you have to order the whole assembly. So I had to order this whole assembly. Um, I ordered an extractor. I ordered this firing pin safety and plunger. I ordered uh, this extractor plunger and spring. I ordered two of these extractor springs. And then on the frame, I ordered uh, three of these trigger springs, these trigger return springs. Figured if anything's going to break inside of the frame, it's going to be this spring. And I'm not saying it will, uh, I'm not saying it's a weak link, but you have two small little bent hooks here. So, you know, common sense, if something's going to break, it's probably going to be one of these little hooks that would break. So I think it's a good idea to have this spring. To take the, um, the frame apart, it, it's not that big a deal. This assembly slides out once you push these little pins in. And then you, um, your uh, barrel retainer. Uh, I just can't think of the proper name for it right off the top of my head. This comes out. You drive out this pin and this pin. As you drive it out from the, the right side, right to left, these two pins here. This pin comes out. Uh, but there's several good videos on how to take this apart, but uh, there's really not a lot in this frame that I feel that would break except for this spring right here. But the frame is not very difficult to take apart. It can easily be done. There's several good videos on it on um, YouTube and also detailed instructions on various websites. So this we're not talking a huge deal here with this frame, so but I would recommend some of these springs right here. But that's what I ordered, and the parts with shipping for all those parts came to $147. Uh, the exact same parts basically for the Glock, very similar parts in the same quantities that I ordered these, $116. So that's, that's not a huge difference, only like $31 difference. I don't consider that a huge difference. The, the parts aren't all that bad, so there's not that big a deal there. Uh, I will say that I was impressed with Walther when I called them up. I tried calling that uh, Earl's Repair Service, which is one of the authorized, I think the authorized repair service for uh, Walther and uh, the guy was on vacation or sometime in September so that didn't fly too well. Um, I want to be able to get parts at basically any time I can. Uh, I know the guy probably needs to go on vacation but it, it's not good to have just one place where you can get parts from so I called Walther, uh, Walther America and um, ordered parts from them and they were very nice on the phone, uh, very helpful. Uh, I had no trouble getting the parts. They had all the parts in stock. So um, I was real pleased with that. That that was a big plus for me. So uh, 
you know, kudos to Walther at their uh, Fort Smith, um, Arkansas um, location. So that that was that's excellent. So I feel a lot better about this with parts. Um, magazines aren't all that difficult. I know some of you think they are, but I had no trouble locating several of them. Anywhere in price from thirty one dollars to um, you know. You know, some some guys want fifty five, sixty, seventy dollars. That's crazy. Uh, really, don't pay any more than forty dollars for this part. If you're paying more, much more than forty dollars, you you're, you're probably getting ripped off. And um, actually, the uh, uh, the the P ninety nine mag is identical to this, but the main difference it's the same body, same floor plate. It's identical. Made in Italy, Mekar. Uh, in fact, that Magnum Research uh, Baby Eagle mag is the same thing, too, and you can get those for like $25. But, and I'll show you the difference why you should not use those mags uh, right now. Okay, uh, here's why I don't recommend using uh, the um, P99 mags or the uh, Magnum Research. Same mag, here's a Magnum Research uh, baby eagle mag same exact mag everything's identical the notch for the uh, magazine catch is different this is the notch right here this notch right here is for the P99 or the PPQ M1 with the paddle release with this being the button release they move the notches down so you can reverse it right or left. Uh, the notches are down here. Now, what I did is I have a bunch of these Baby Eagle mags. So I cut a notch where this notch is. Mike didn't cut it identical to, to this uh, the original mag. And it works fine. Works great. No problem. The main issue is when you insert the mag, it catches on that first notch, which is not that big a deal. You just press the mag button and, and it'll lock in. But the reason I'm saying don't do that, unless you just want to use it for range mags, is if you have to reload this in a hurry, your mag is going to hang up on that notch, rendering the, the weapon useless. So you could get in trouble with that. So it was an experiment I did, and it works great, but you have to press the button and hold it in to lock the mag all the way in. So I don't recommend doing that. Uh, just look for the, the regular mags for the Walther. And this is the reason, by the way, Walther did not use uh, the same mag for both the M1 and the M2 PPQ. It would have been nice if they could, but to put this with this notch in here, no good because it's going to lock in before you want it to. So enough said about that. Okay, now we're going to reassemble the slide. It might be a little cumbersome for me because I'm trying to reach around a tripod on this camera thing to do this, so I'm going to do the best I can, but at least you'll get an idea here. It might take me longer than what I normally would t take, but I'm sure you'll understand. Let's put the uh, extractor spring back in there, and there's a little hole where that pushes into. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and put this extractor plunger, this retaining plunger, back in this hole. Push that in. Okay. Now we'll put the extractor in, and you have to kind of like work with this a little bit. In order to get this ex extractor in, you have to push this plunger down. Now we're going to push that plunger down and just kind of start this. Okay. Then we're going to put the firing pin safety in, safety plunger. Now the extractor holds this in, so you have to get this just right in order for this to go in. Probably should have put this in first. 
but I think you'll get the idea. Okay, there it goes. You want it to work freely. And then you just push the extractor in. When it's locked in, boom, plunger comes up. Your extractor's in. That's all it's to it. You have free movement with this plunger. And the extractor has free movement. That's all it's to it. Okay, now we'll put the striker assembly back in. Just pushes right back in. Then set this on a flat surface. Put your punch on, this, on the end of the striker assembly. Push that down so it's flush with the slide. And then we're going to move this back plate in. And again, it's it's a little difficult with me reaching over this, but and then that'll just here click in. Now that's done. So there's your slide back together. Barrel in. Recoil spring assembly in. And by the way, I did order a recoil spring assembly, but I ordered it, uh, I did not order it from uh, the one at, uh, from Walther Arms, I ordered it from uh, Midway. I got the uh, P99 uh, one, which is the exact same one, the SW99. It's all the same recoil spring, so there's a tip right there. You can use the one for the PPQM1, the P99, or the SW99. That's all the same assembly. And if you get the one for the Smith & Wesson or the P99, it's like $12. If you get the one from Walther, it's $25. So you guys can do the math on that. And then we're just going to line this up on the slide. Everything's lined up. Function test. There you go. Back together and ready to go. Okay, so there you have it. That's my review, detail stripping, uh, cleaning, general thoughts on this Walther PPQM2. Um, I feel it is an excellent weapon. I, I definitely give you know, a thumbs up on this. If this is the, the weapon you try to choose, that you have chosen, why, uh, good for you. You're not going to be disappointed. As I said before, practice with what you're going to shoot. Don't hop around to 10 different methods of operation and uh, things such as that. Uh, you're just going to wind up getting messed up when you really need to, to get the gun into action. But um, I know from my first video on the Glock, you probably think I was just strictly a Glock person. Well, I do like the Glocks. That's what I shoot. But that's me. Uh, I believe there's plenty of other good firearms, and those are the purpose of these videos, is to tell you what I feel are good firearms from parts availability, track record, you know, the, the detail stripping, um, the, the real nuts and bolts of these weapons, uh, rather than just taking it out and shooting it, because as I said before, all that shows is basically how good or how bad I'm going to shoot, but um, any of these weapons these first run weapons such as HK's, Beretta's, SIG's, XD's, you know, uh, they're, they're gonna shoot they're gonna shoot very very well it's it's the man it's not the gun it's the man behind the gun so someone may pick up a PPQ and get a lousy group somebody someone else could pick up a PPQ and get a, a raggedy one hole group um, it's it's the person behind the gun so all too often people say the gun is not accurate or there, there's issues with the gun. It's usually the person shooting the gun. That's what I found out. But uh, I've shot these extensively and uh, the, the, the group is very easy gun to, to, to become real good at with um, shooting because the trigger is excellent. As I said before, it has an excellent trigger. Um, the, the gun is, is smooth. It's, reliable. As I said before, I would not hesitate at all to carry this weapon, uh, to use this weapon as my main battle weapon, 
go-to gun, self-defense gun. Uh, you, you can't get you can't get much better. As I said, uh, I, I do like the Glock, but I would take this if the the Glock would disappear. Let's say all of a sudden, I would take this in a heartbeat and not look back. It's an excellent weapon. I think if you guys uh, decide to purchase this and uh, this is what you like you go for it because you're not going to get any better. So that's it for the, the PPQ. And uh, if you have any comments, please post them. Uh, let's try to, be, like I said, be civil about it. And uh, we're, all, we're all gun people here. And uh, my opinions may, different, may be different than yours. And it's a free country. But um, I hope these have helped um, you guys out there as to why I look at certain weapons the way I do with, with takedown parts, things such as that. So let's, uh, let's have fun and you guys take care and I'll see me in my next video. The Dutchman is out.